Gesinu Dangedang. My English name is Chantel Adams, and my Haida name is Jodas Linla. I'm Haida through my father, and of European descent through my mother. I was eight years old when I moved from Haida Gwaii. As a young girl, I didn't have the conceptual knowledge to understand what sexualized violence was. Now, as a young adult, I hear about residential schools, Indian day school, about community members being taken, being stolen, about violence that has happened, and the violations that are continually happening. Colonizers and people in systemic structures have intentionally created these policies, systems, and acts of violence. They have worked diligently to silence us, to try to take away our connection to our community, to our culture, and to our land. They have worked hard to try to make us fit in with their ways of being in this world, to lose the very threads that make us a people. I'm currently part of the Sisters Rising project, and in August 2017, I had the opportunity to travel back to my homeland of Haida Gwaii, and for three days, I was able to speak with women about the topic of land and body in relation to sexualized violence. Throughout this project, I have come to realize what is happening to our lands is also happening to our bodies. We are all connected. I see how the land can be held as sacred, yet I also see how the land can be treated as an object to be violated. I see how indigenous bodies can be treated in these same ways. Land sovereignty is body sovereignty. I use this view of land and body as a foundation for this video. This is my way for our voices to be heard. My English name is Alice Montjoy and I'm Chantel's auntie and my Haida name is Killer Whale Woman, San Judd. My uncle Sylvester Peel gave me the name because I carried a few recipes from my past life into now and was able to um, smoke him fish heads and stuff. So he just loved me for that. So he said he'll give me a real good name. My English name is Terry Russ. My hotter name is Kwakwi, which means yappy bird. And I'm from the Mam and Getme clan, Hawa. And um, one thing I'm happy to see is when all the young women are out berry picking, because I know it's not gonna die because Terry and I have picked a lot of berries in our time and um, we really appreciate the berries and I'm glad, I'm sure Terry is glad to see the young people come out and pick too because it's going to go on forever like hundreds of years ago. The same, our grandmothers and great grandmothers and generations back all picked the berries and cared for the land and it's good to see that some people are going out and doing the same. My English name is Lisa White. I come from Old Masset, Haida Gwaii. I live in Old Masset, Haida Gwaii. Um, my family is from Dodens. My clan is Yaglonis. Uh, my Haida name is Koo Young. And uh, I operate a gift gallery in, in my community of Old Masset. My Nani Levina White always told me that there were two Haida laws that we were always meant to follow and there are respect and consent. And no matter, you know, what area of life you're looking at or what it should apply to, it, it should apply to all aspects of your life and, um, and to each other. So those are the two main laws, and she said everything else fell under that. So as long as you had those two things, then things would be um, in balance. 
and protected. I think that if we actually went back to the way that our, our people treated the land, where they took, you know, they only took what they needed, they value added to those trees that they took and they left the, they left the land intact for, for the other animals and the plants and the medicines. We are not living in balance. Our lands and our people are not being protected. We are the people of the cedar. Our homes, clothes, storage and cooking boxes, our totem poles with our family stories, they were all made from cedar. These are more than just trees. Taking away these trees is taking away integral parts of our culture and who we are as people. Audrey Siegel told a story of when she sees the devastation, she sees those stumps and piles of logs. What flashes in her mind are the old pictures from around the world of bodies piled up. She sees our bodies, our women, missing and murdered women. We've never treated with the government, the colonial government. These are unceded unceded lands, these are Haida lands. What they're doing here is not respectful and it's not consensual. The clear cutting is, is a continued assault and it has to stop. I asked the women what would be beneficial ways for yourself or other people to heal from the devastation help me talk through um, whatever I'm going through. And I find that's a lot with our women nowadays. They, they, um, they don't know how to ask for help. And it's uh, taking a toll on the younger ones. And that's why I'm saying that our younger ones need to take the power back and be taught positive things and, and I think that'll be a good start. Crews can go in and, and get employment through healing the land, like through enabling the land to heal itself. I think that would be really healing for our people to be able to do that, although it would be kind of traumatizing to go out there because if you go out there and you go onto the lands and you see the clear cutting and the disrespect that's happened, it's really hard. It's really hard on, on us and on our spirits. And Ada Swanson, D. Nan Kian, Karen Stewart, D. Ao Kian, Ote Gusu, D. Gulagan, Joth Honest, U. Ejin, Good Nake, Let's Go Oat, Hinnity Had Kian, Jordan Stewart, Hinnity Kian. I love it here. I love the island. I love the beaches. It's my favorite part of the whole like island is going to Toe Hill. I find that really healing for like the stuff I've been through and everything. So getting away to there and hearing the waves and just being there is really nice. The way I look at it is like when I go there and it's windy and I hear the waves, it's kind of just like the wind will carry my problems away for a little bit. It sounds, sounds kind of weird, but that's what I always think of whenever I go there. Before in all times, if anything bothered you, you like say you had um, sore feet, you go in the ocean and wade in the water and you get cured. So that was a big part of our healing is the water and then to get rid of a whole bunch of negative energy, you jump in the water and take a dip. Any time of the year it's the same, very cold. And so it's very healing. So my name is Victoria Amaliska Swanson Williams and my mother's from Haida Gwaii, uh, Old Masset, and my father is from Tuasin First Nation. So the title of my job is a long one. <laughs> it's uh, Indigenous Cultural Enhancement Facilitator. And what that means is, it's a, well, it's a new position in the Delta School District. 
um, well, all of all of Canada that we have a new uh, new uh, addition to the truth and reconciliation that has to be taught in schools, the indigenous culture. So my job is to pass on my knowledge of um, Coast Salish culture and Haida culture, and um, teach them the difference between the different areas in Canada, even and around the world, of the different indigenous people and teach about art and language and history and um, yeah it's all indigenous based and that's and I spend about half an hour in each classroom teaching them and then I move on to the next classroom so I go to about seven classrooms a day and a different school every day. <laughs> what is it like when you are kids? I'm happy um, I feel like I'm funnier <laughs> Um, I don't know, I just, yeah, overall happier and um, I feel like the energy around me in general is better and the people that I end up being around is a lot better and then, yeah, so, uh, overall it's just a better experience <laughs> when I'm connected. Um, my family for one, uh, my dad has been a big support in my life, same as my mom obviously, but it's just my dad, he's got that strong voice that I always hear in my head telling me like what I need to get over or how to get through things and like um, how to manage things properly in my life and then I have my mom who's always been my spiritual guidance and connecting me to my Haida Gwaii family then I um, and both of them support me in like my political endeavors and things like that um, but one of the main things for me is when I quit drinking <laughs> because um, I can wake up without a hangover for one <laughs> and I can um, I'm just more productive and I'm more articulate so overall it's just I'm more clear-headed so it's better that way and that's better for my well-being oh and fitness oh I love fitness because then I get to clear my head and then think about what I'm gonna do for the day or whatever and then I got more energy and then it's all better for my well-being <laughs> and I eat better oh food <laughs> food's important to eat properly yeah you can actually tell the difference for sure whether you eat good or bad yeah. I feel like Reconciliation is ha can't happen until we get our lands back, or, and it can't happen until they stop the assault on our lands, and and we change that relationship. I think you have to let go. You have to learn to um, let go. If something really bothers you, do a ceremony. Say, I can't carry this anymore, and actually do a physical thing where you get rid of all the hurts and stuff and get to, together with your friends and do it and um, yeah you have to physically do it and then you say and say I don't want to carry this anymore it's not mine to carry and I don't want it anymore and I want to get rid of this hurt and send it off and then there's different plants you use for cleansing your body. Say somebody abused you, touched you. They could have even punched you or something or slapped you or touched you or you didn't want to be touched. You do a cleanse with the yarrow plant. You make a strong tea out of it and you wash yourself with the yarrow and say, I'm washing this away because I don't want to, it to be part of my memory. I don't want it to be part of me anymore. Every day, everybody swallows negativity. And so with swallowing that, it, it doesn't make your body feel good. So what I do, I sit down and meditate. When I come out here, I sit down and I can feel if it's the tree, uh, Mother Earth, or the water that is calling me, that is pulling me. And just to, as an example, if it's the tree, I go up to the tree and hold on and just scream like crazy. And that way you're letting go of the negativity that I've, that I've swallowed. And afterwards, it's just so relaxing. What is your vision for girls, women, and communities? Is they should... Um go back to the old ways where um, the grandparents and all the elders were, nannies and chinnies were really respected and uh, now the young people have to 
the mothers have to step up and teach their children respect, how to respect and care for everything. All I want is positivity. I can't think of anything particular, but maybe, maybe having more like um, interesting, sober activities, like something that's not like cheesy, if that makes sense. You know, something that people can actually relate to and don't feel like it's forced. Um, yeah, just healthy, healthy community and happy. I don't know, I always looked at the youth center as a second home and it was always really nice being there and feeling the positive energy and um, knowing we're gonna try and do something to change something in the community or at least try to was always really nice. Women of all the clans to step up and to, uh, to take our power back and in a positive way. I'm hoping that's what, what will happen in the very near future is for our women to step up and to deal with our um, concerns and the, just the role that we used to have years ago. It, it would uh, balance everything out, whereas now there's no balance whatsoever. It's more on the male side than the women's side. I want girls to feel safe walking around by themselves and not have to feel like they have to watch their back or watch people around them. I feel like the most healing thing to do is to just just to speak up about it. It helps every single time. It makes me feel lighter and it makes me feel like I don't have to carry it around with me anymore. We have to start treating the land like be that we're a part of it. We're part of nature. We're not above it. And it's, and it's going to affect us. And I, I think we probably already went beyond, beyond the tipping point. But I think that there's always hope. As long as there's life, there's hope in that we can turn things around. If everybody could get together and agree that we can do this better and that we can be respectful and that we can ask for consent. All right, so my inspiration uh, is the Raven and the Clam Shell. That is the How to Creation story. Um, there was a supernatural raven that perched on the shell and a bunch of men emerged but in this case I wanted to have a woman emerging because um, uh, not to sound like cliche or anything, but I really feel like it's women's time to emerge and uh, she's doing it on her own and um, she she represents strength to me and um, just th just she doesn't really look like she has a whole lot of fear going on. She looks like she's inquisitive, but she doesn't really look like she has fear. She looks more curious to me than anything. 